Hey guys, Bunny here. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about the competitive system that we have in the West versus the competitive system that exists currently in the Chinese region for Hearthstone. After the Chinese region had some increasing success in the few last Masters tours, there's been increasing questions about how does that system work? Does it support players better? Um, is there a correlation between the system and having all these Chinese players on the top of uh, the Masters tours. So uh, I thought I'd make a little bit of a tweet longer or a short video explaining the Chinese system, first of all. Um, at this point, I'm just going to assume that you kind of know how the European system works. I'm going to link it in the video description or in the corresponding uh, post so that if you don't know how it works already, you can just pause the video and you can come back here after you've familiarized yourself with how the Western system works. But I think a lot of you will already know, so it's a little bit redundant. Uh, I'm going to skip it. Um, also, please feel free to correct me if I have misunderstood anything about how the Chinese system works from what has been explained to me. Uh, leave a comment below or just, just let me know. I hope I got all the details correctly so far. But the main outline should be it should be fine 100 percent anyways um let's get right into it the chinese competitive system can basically be divided in two different completely or almost completely independent systems which consists of firstly an open system that qualifies players to the world championship and that anybody can in principle participate in and a team league that incorporates battlegrounds as well as constructed and that to my knowledge only basically serves promotional purpose that promotes hearthstone and um, it's doing a pretty good job at that so let's firstly have a little bit of a look at the competitive system and compare it to the one in the other three regions i have a little bit of a graphic here um, explaining how points and how you qualify for the world championship in the chinese system so on the very top you get the world championship and below that, with a legend icon, um, we have something called gold points. Gold points um, are earned through different tournaments as well as ladder. And the top eight players in a four month period will be playing, the top eight point earners will be playing in a world championship qualifier tournament. And the winner of that tournament then qualifies as a Chinese representative for the world championship. Okay, let's have a little bit of a look into uh, the specific ways that you earn points to be able to make it to this top eight tournament. The first one is ladder. The second one is gold open and gold online tournaments. Those are like massive. Uh, the online tournaments are massive online tournaments with up to like 20,000 participants that are inside the client and that can anybody can participate in and the gold open tournaments are something that is comparable to previous uh dream hacks or or master tour stops however i've been informed that currently everything is played online and there are no regular gold open tournaments anymore um if that may change in the future i don't know uh anyways these three ways give you points together with the masters tours themselves the Masters Tours you qualify into um, to be a Chinese representative for the Masters Tour. You have to be one of the top 50 point earners from these open and online tournaments as well as from ladder um, as well as previous Masters Tours. You have to be one of the 50 uh, best players or most point earners in China and you'll be representing China at the Masters Tour. And the Masters Tour, together with these previously mentioned things, gives you then points, these gold points that give you to the qualifying tournament. Let's have a little bit of a look at the point structure. So you can see from the top, you have the World Championship itself, um, kind of making sure that people that perform at the World Championship have a better chance to get reinvited. Then below that, you have the Masters Tour, which for the first place gets 20 points, which is the maximum number of points you can earn in the system, second place 10 and so forth. And then below that, you have the gold open and gold online tournaments, respectively, giving also a massive chunk of points for the for the opens and then a little bit less for the for the online tournaments. And then at the very bottom, we have ladder, where for the first 
150 players, you get two points. For the next 150 players, you get one point for playing ladder. And ladder is monthly. Um, the online tournaments happen, I think, once a month-ish. Um, hope to get some clarification on that. And the open tournaments, I think, happen just as often as Masters Tours. But like I said, they seem to be suspended right now. So the upside, I think, is the World Championship is accessible to absolutely everybody. And there are more large open tournaments for everybody to participate in. Um, another upside, I think, is uh, it gives a reason to GMs and like other highly competitive players that are already qualified for a bunch of things to keep them playing ladder and keep trying their hardest throughout the year. Um, in the current GM system, it can be kind of easy to be at the very top and then not care too much about Masses Tours and stuff like this, because the only way to get to Worlds is to win a GM season. Uh, the downsides of the system, I think, are mainly the way that um, the tournaments are played. Uh, these Masters Tour-ish kind of tournaments are not very accessible if they would be transported to a Western system. Like for the Chinese system, they might be pretty good, but they're not that good for like a uh, system that incorporates all three other regions because um, there's a lot of travel involved and that restricts people from being able to play in these tournaments. And I don't think that's a good idea to adapt. Furthermore, these open and online tournaments are played as best of three LHS no ban closed deck list all right that is kind of the worst format in terms of competitiveness that you can that you can have that is still passable that's still better than a best of one um i think everybody that's ever played in dreamhack or a tournament like this in the past where you had closed deck list knows that this should be a thing of the past because after round one basically it becomes a huge snipe fest where you just try to gather information on what your opponent played, what tech cards they have, what lineups they have, but yeah, what are even the decks? You only see the classes in closed deck list. So I think closed deck list is something that we can leave behind. And we do have the technology with stuff like Battle Rift and other great, great uh, sites, but Battle Rift being the most prominent one that um, lets you play with open deck lists. So we really don't need to go into this. Um, yeah. Furthermore, I think LHS, I know it's supposed to mimic a little bit of the ladder experience and get newer players into the system um, and mimic their experience. I think in order to keep the system more competitive, it would be nicer to adapt something like the best of three conquest with a ban or just yeah, just generally including a ban, I think is, is a very good idea to make the system more competitive. Uh, so I think what's being played in the current Western qualifiers for the Masters Tour is a, is a way better system than than what they have for their large online open tournaments. So you see, the systems aren't directly adaptable to each other because, of course, with having cross-region play uh, between APAC, NA, NDU, you run into a lot more barriers than you would have just in the Chinese system. Okay, then the second part, let me talk a little bit about uh, the Gold Team Championship, or sometimes referred to just as the Chinese Team League, um, and Grandmasters. Uh, I do think it's desirable uh, to have a way for people to play Hearthstone professionally, and that also promotes Hearthstone as a game, something that gives a consistent income to people playing the game at the highest level. Um, so you want to be rewarding excellence in the game and keeping the, these players... Uh, playing your game now in the team league you currently have 10 teams of uh, five players each um, those are three constructed and two battlegrounds player uh, compete each other and they have separate prize pools and separate finals but in order for a team to be represented in this it needs to be able to field um, both categories which i think is nice because i think it's nice for teams to be involved in it teams are usually a lot better um, at acquiring sponsors and having teams in the system also just helps people or players have a more stable income since they don't need to be just financed by winnings or by the money that Blizzard just pumps into the system. Also teams are a lot more recognizable. You can cheer for them a little bit better than just individual players. And um, yeah, I think that's a great 
it's a it's a great thing to have teams also we've had team leagues in the past in hearthstone and they've been amazing trinity series is one of the most beloved things that we have had in hearthstone competitively uh, the production was amazing but the production that in the team league is also absolutely great um and it seems like a great way to to attract sponsors to the game uh, on top of what is already existing also the gtc system uh, is showing growing numbers and it's rising in popularity in china and i think such a system could also be popular in the west so now after having looked a little bit to at uh, what the system looks like what the two um, main components are what, what would i ideally want uh, for system in the west moving forward um, so i think first of all i think master tours are great i think they should be kept and they should be moved offline uh, again to protect competitive integrity in the future 850 bucks as a participant participation money would be very desirable and make the game a lot more accessible to everybody like even people from poor regions which definitely should have a chance at competing and uh, this does mean that we would kind of need crowdfunding back for the next season for the next year but i think it would truly be worth it for for our open global system and i i hope that blizzard can see that so regarding what uh, else I would want, there's kind of two scenarios. The first one is you take GM and you replace it with a team league. It's what I'm kind of in favor of because I think it presents better marketability and it also keeps um, players more interested over the course of the system. I think then it also needs a point system. Ladder needs to be incorporated. I kind of like how points are granted in the Chinese system. It's not too intense that there's not too much of a camp pass on the last days of ladder. So there's some influx to get some point to keep people uh, getting consistent finishes. But um, yeah, not that much more. I also think that the open tournaments, the Dream Hack esque tournaments, the Tour Sub tournaments, I think we should not have those because. Um, like I said, it's just too restricting for people that don't have access to travel in the world like they did in 2018. I don't think that was a good system. We kind of just had people flying all over the world, uh, sponsored by teams, racking up these points and just making the standings completely inaccessible to everybody that wasn't able to do that. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I personally don't have a perfect answer on how this works, but one of the ideas I had was to have a qualifying tournament where the top 512 ladder players from every uh, server get to play in a tournament. Of course, you can only play one tournament like NAEU or APAC. And um, from that, you could earn points that could give you points according to kind of to the, the, the open, open tournament system with the majority of points still coming from Masters Tours. Like they do it and Masters Tours also being the most important thing in the western scene right now i think for those 512 man tournaments you could probably play best of three conquest one ban of course it's not quite as competitive as a masters tour tournament but they should also not be quite as big of a commitment um as the masters tours themselves those should be still the main pillars of qualifying and then the other scenario is kind of like if gm isn't replaced which i think is the more likely scenario because there's this YouTube deal uh, between uh, Blizzard and YouTube, as far as I know. Uh, I don't know any of the details, but I guess at least that deal should be on for another year. So then GM wouldn't be replaced logically. Like I said, I would prefer Team League. But in order to keep high level players in engaged and also to make the system more open for everybody, I think Worlds should be a 12 or 16 player event and have eight regional spots and then eight spots that are awarded to the highest master tour point earner all over the master tours from that year and those should not be region locked so in theory we could have two europeans two apac players two chinese and 10 from na um that's the most realistic scenario as all of you know anyway that's kind of my uh suggestion for how I would like to change the system and a little bit of an explanation of how the Chinese system works. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Leave me a comment on what you think should change or is the system already perfect? Would you want it to stay this way? 
um, what are some upsides or downsides you see differently than from what I see? Yeah, and I'll see you on stream soon.